What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. The final final little pass is a business. Dead meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, your horror safe haven. I'm Chelsea. And I'm James. And we're married and we like to get scared together. Yes. And we are going to Texas this week. <laughs> oh, you're you're the one doing the accent this time. That's fun. <laughs> it was barely an accent. I don't know what was going on there. Yeah, we're talking about the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. At first, I was going to do something completely different this week, but then everyone wanted us to talk about this we need so. to know what you think about texas chains now this one is called texas chainsaw massacre yeah, chainsaw one word yes now time. hon did you know that this is actually in in this franchise unlike halloween where there are three halloween movies like movies entitled halloween no two movies in the texas chainsaw massacre the share the exact same title because the original is the Texas Chainsaw Chain, Two Chainsaw Words. Chainsaw Massacre, yeah. The 2003 remake is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre with chainsaw as one word. This leaves out the article. This is just oh, Texas Chainsaw okay. Massacre. So we have a very clear way to differentiate all these movies. So all you got to say is Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and everyone will know that you're talking about this 2022 movie yeah totally released on netflix <laughs> yeah this is what happens when you make a, a film your horror identity like your favorite thing because everyone just wants to hear what i think about this sequel and the thing is as much as i i love love texas chainsaw massacre the original the mm -hmm. so what the original is the texas chainsaw massacre yes chainsaws two words so ridiculous yes. <laughs> you all are gonna know what i'm talking about 74 right. chainsaw 74 chainsaw 74 <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie. It's my favorite horror movie. If you haven't listened to our episode about that movie, uh, go check it out. It's probably the most in-depth I get, like, it, on any movie ever on Night this House, podcast. or not Night House, uh, His House. Oh, yeah, His that House a was two, a two-parter. Yeah. Okay, you're right. But Texas Second. Chainsaw <laughs> gets very... We get in the weeds because that movie, I think, is it's brilliant. It's It's so intelligent and i think it has a lot of depth that if you're not really familiar with the genre and that movie you maybe don't realize exists there's that movie's commenting a lot of a lot of things very subtly too it's like it's very smartly written and i i just think it's brilliant so of course everyone wants to know what i think of this movie and that's the thing as much as I fucking love the first one, I don't really give a fuck about the sequels, except the second one. Texas Chainsaw 2 is fucking great. Yeah. I love it. It's a delight. Um, I love Stretch and Chop Top, Chop Top and it's everything. It's it's so good as a weird comedic send-up of slashers. Yeah. And then everything after that is uneven to say the least. Yeah, everything after that just they're not uh they're either not as joyful as the second one or as they don't get what's scary about that first one, maybe. A lot of people love that remake, the 2003 one. I hate one. it. It's just really dreary and sterile, and it feels like a 2000s horror movie in not a good way. I think it's fine. Yeah. I don't know. And I always forget that Daniel Pearl did both. Like He, he shot both, was the yeah. director of photography of both of them. It's just I think it's the Platinum Dunes house style that maybe is what i don't like and also i just don't buy jessica, jessica beale, beale yeah. does not look like she belongs in any other time period we tried it once with the illusionist and it wasn't good and we brought her forward like 100 years and we're like okay maybe the 1970s no it still doesn't work she just has like a millennium face i don't mm. know how to describe it yeah i don't know so basically i just i love the first one so much and that's that. Well, what's interesting is like the last one was Leatherface in 2017. That was a prequel to the previous one, Texas Chainsaw 3D, which was a direct sequel to the original. Yeah. So this movie. What, is is Leatherface the one where it's like him as just a guy? Uh, Leatherface is the one where he's like a kid. And you yes. think it's the one kid throughout the movie because there's like a bigger quiet kid. But then that kid gets killed. And then it's no, it's the, it's like the kind of like charming guy. I was about to 
say, doesn't he have kind of a romantic thing going on? He does, on? yeah. It's but so weird. But then he chainsaws it's, her okay. through the fucking face. That's not okay. Yeah, like and that. then I guess they were going to make more sequels to Leatherface, but that didn't happen. Uh, the rights got switched over, and now they're doing this, which is a requel, as uh, anyone who has seen the new Scream should be familiar with the term. It is the hot in vogue thing uh, in horror right now. Uh, very much popularized by Halloween 2018, which this movie... I think this movie's making fun of. You think it's making fun of A little bit, yeah. Not just taking from... So, yeah, I think it's making fun of it. Let's get our thoughts about this movie out up front. Yeah. Because um, we watched it twice now. Yes. We watched it the day it came out, and then we rewatched it just to give you an informed opinion for this episode. And, uh, you know... This movie's divisive, I would say, online. This movie tore horror Twitter asunder. Like, everyone... <laughs> we were all united with Scream. Yeah, we were all having a good time. I mean, granted, it wasn't totally unanimous. But still, horror Twitter was, like, holding hands in a circle. Like, yay, Scream. And then this movie comes out. Holy fuck, my timeline. I didn't even want to say anything about this movie. Because I feel like either way... It's... I ventured out. I said my thoughts. I said it was stupid and I liked it. It and was stupid fun. I think for the most part, people didn't have issues with that opinion. <laughs> like it's stupid and I enjoyed myself. How would you compare it to Halloween Kills? <sighs> Halloween Kills is a better movie. Okay. Grand, you know what though? It's weird how different. Because Halloween Kills, I similarly also saw twice mm -hmm. in a theater. Twice this one we yeah. watched twice just sitting on our couch. Because it was released so on it's Netflix. it's hard. I wonder how much that is kind of coloring my perception of like, oh, Halloween Kills was a better movie. It's like, yeah, because I watched it with an amazing sound system in a theater. Sure, and, sure. But. I do think Kills is slightly better. I think Kills is scarier. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, I, I feel pretty similar to this movie about how I did with Halloween Kills. I do think Halloween Kills is slightly better. Um, but with both of the, those movies, you have people being in it like, it's the worst movie I've ever seen. It's just, not. Can the, we just I stop I promise this? it's not the worst movie you've ever seen. Yeah. Have you seen Veronica? Then it's <laughs> not the worst movie you've ever seen. Oh, fuck that movie. Oh, man. Fuck that movie. Like, I joke, but also, God damn it, that movie. Um... <laughs> listen to the commentary track uh of of it on the patreon it's us just crying for like an hour and a half didn't we make wrestle watch that with yeah. us oh poor it's the most like bleak commentary track because we're just so sad the entire time um yeah i don't know and i think i think the, the advantage halloween kills has that this one can't have is it's got jamie lee curtis who yes. is a tie to the original whereas this one unfortunately both gunner hansen and marilyn burns have passed since the original move so it's like you don't have that and i think that automatically just doesn't make this as fulfilling yeah uh one thing that this movie does have going for it is its length um it's 82 easy, minutes breezy, with credi baby. credits. It is those end credits roll at the 74 minute mark. Good. You are an hour 15 minutes into this movie when it ends. And that's great. Even though, hot take, cut it down more. It Ten could be short. It could be at least 10 <laughs> minutes shorter. Give this, give this the host treatment. Give us a 60 minute movie. Cut out all this Sally bullshit that you don't need. And I that thoughts about that really slows down the movie and kills it and just give us a nice little fucking uh gen z leatherface movie because that's what this is and i yeah we're gonna talk about we're gonna have to talk bullshit, about all right? that because everyone's screaming online about how this movie is a woke texas <laughs> chainsaw massacre which like first of all no it's not it's not it's definitely not just because it's engaging with the cultural zeitgeist yeah, of the moment just, does not make it woke or SJW, dude. So, just, yeah, it's it just takes place in 2021. Yeah. That's it. And, and like, it's got young kids who are acting like Gen Z does, yep. stereotypically, I guess. Yeah, and the movie Sorry. is not like, like I don't know, uh, uh, over... 
um, siding with those no, characters if anything, at all. This movie's, I mean, it's it's like any slasher where we meet these characters, you kind of hate them a little bit, and mm-hmm. then they just get fucking slashed up. Yeah, the whole movie. This movie's relentless. <laughs> One of them gets so much poop dumped on her head (laughs) like the one that twitter was like the most upset about that melody character is the one who literally gets covered in shit yeah it like comes out of a pipe and it looks like i don't know it looks like shrek swamp mud (laughs) going on to her head it's (laughs) yeah smell like duke the rest of the movie uh yeah other uh, we'll do the these non-spoilery thoughts before we dive deep into it um very violent oh my god yeah it's there's so much blood. It's just, it's so gory. And what's funny is like, I was thinking about how with the original, and again, this is something I talk about in the episode we did about it, but something I, I adore about the original is you come away from it. Everyone where, you know, you talk to someone who's like, oh man, I saw Texas Chainsaw when I was a kid. I couldn't sleep for weeks. It was, you know, it's so gory. Like it's so scary. And it's, you don't see that movie really Hardly plays anything. tricks on your mind and makes you think you saw so much more than it did and i i think now you have a hard time getting away with that because people are kind of aware of that mm-hmm. being a, a a technique i guess it, it's just you're never gonna like recapture that i think it's just that movie so smartly choreographed and shot to where your brain just fills in all the gaps but I think if you make a sequel to Texas Chainsaw, it's just got to be gory. Now you can't, it's got to be gory. You, now yeah. you're, you know, it's like, okay, that was very cool and clever, but now mm-hmm. we just want to see him, like, rip people. <laughs> and that even started with Toby Hooper himself with the second one. Yeah, it's The fine. opening fucking scene has a guy getting half his head chainsawed off. It's great. And yeah. that's what you expect from Texas Chainsaw Massacre now, and this movie delivers in that regard. Uh, however, it definitely isn't, like... One of the things that really makes a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie, to me, uh, stand out from other slasher franchises is the family. You either yes, have the Sawyers I that too. or the Hewitts, as they're called in the remakes, and this doesn't have that. This we need is more weirdos. Just, yeah, yeah. Give yeah. us the weird brothers or cousins or whatever. This one just has Leatherface. And yeah. And kind of turns him into a Jason Michael type just like unstoppable killing machine. Yeah, they could have done stuff with his like adoptive family, the, yeah. the you know, the orphanage. I know she says that oh, he's kind of the only one I've got left here and he needs special care, but that could have been like a weird family of of his almost coming to his defense. I don't know, like he needs a backup band kind of. <laughs> yeah. He's not a uh yeah, you can't just have Leatherface. And I mean, any Leatherface is good because I love him. But it's like you need the the brother and, you know, Drayton and all the you know, Gubbins. Yeah, nubbins. Oh, my God. Gubbins. And gubbins. <laughs> like, gubbins. I don't know what Gubbins means, but it sounds <laughs> weird to me. And I love it. I don't know why I just call it Gubbins. I yeah, Gubbin no. Sawyer. Gubbins <laughs> would be a good name for another Sawyer. It's like some weird cousin. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Gubbins would be the equivalent of like I think I feel like I've made this fucking reference on the podcast before, but how Snoopy has his cousin Spike who like you've lives definitely in the talked desert. about Spike that's on Gubbins. the podcast. All right, that's Gubbin Sawyer then. <laughs> Is Spike the one with the scarf? Is he? Like I don't the... remember. If he, he has like or no, that's Joe yeah. Cool. Joe Cool has the sunglasses. Okay. I think that's also just Snoopy. I don't know my Snoopy lore. Yeah, I'm I think sorry. that's kind of like how the the Red Baron or the yeah, it's like that's where he has the scarf and he flies around. Yeah, that's just Snoopy. Okay. Yeah, that's just him living out his yeah. fantasies of Spike is a different character. Okay, got it. Mm-hmm. All right, now that that's settled. Uh, on that <laughs> note, the Leatherface is scary in this movie. He is. Yeah, he's got a very cool look. Uh, he's played by Mark Burnham, who we looked up on Google. Just, I'm obsessed. <laughs> he's just a big boy with it's a mustache, a and he looks cool. Uh, very, very great pick for Leatherface. He could play like a Paul Bearer. <laughs> yeah. He's got the mustache. He's too big. Paul Bearer was, was a, he short? a short, oh. fat man who just, woo wee. <laughs> <laughs> Rest in peace, Paul Bearer. Oh. Uh, yeah. So, you know, it's it's. In Texas, Bulgaria. and it's got a massacre, but like it's not. I don't know how good of a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie it is. I think it's a fine slasher. Yeah, you know, it's got some cool slasher sequences. Uh, as with most slashers, third act, I'm pretty bored. I'm yeah on my phone. Um, but other than that, I don't think it's the worst movie. 
Uh, and I think it's funnier than people give it credit for. I think people are like, it was unintentionally funny. I'm like, no, I think that was intentional. I think it kind of knows what it is. I also think, yeah, I mean, even just beyond the third act kind of being a snooze, I think once we get past the initial setup of it, I'm kind of bored with it, especially I think rewatching it. I think it's solid until the bus scene is over. Yeah. After bus sure, scene. Sure, yeah. That bus uh, scene is great. Bus scene's great and actually kind of horrifying. It like, is. It's scary. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess we can start talking about the movie in depth. So, you know, if you uh, haven't seen it yet and you need to just blow off an hour, 15 minutes of time, go check it out. Whatever. It's fine. Yeah, it's fun. We we start off, we've got more John Larroquette narration, which is really cool. It's yep. kind of this TV special about the original, the events of the original movie and only one survived and her name was Sally and now she won't give any interviews to Entertainment Tonight or whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Sally, we kind of instantly get sense off the bat that like, oh, Sally's definitely going to be a character in this or else. Yeah, and she's played by... Uh... The actress was in Mandy, the uh, Irish mm -hmm. actress who is, uh, what's her name? Um, Olwen Foyere. Oh, boy. I don't know <laughs> Irish <laughs> pronunciations. So uh, I've seen people online be like, God, why did you cast Sally as like this 100-year-old woman who's what all weak? What are you weak talking about? This is great casting. It's It honestly, if I didn't know, like if I wasn't familiar with the original and I didn't know you know, the actress. And the, like, I just would have assumed, oh, yeah, that's her. Yeah. She looks like she's been, you know, like, if you look at a character like Sally, she's not living an easy life after Texas Chainsaw. If she's this character where she becomes a ranger and is, like, just becomes obsessed with the stuff that happened to her. She even looks sunbaked. Yeah. Like, she lives in the middle of Texas where the sun's just constantly beating down on you because it's not like there's trees ever. It just, yeah. it just, her casting feels right. It does. And I like that actress a lot. She's great in uh, Mandy as the bad guys, like, second in command, kind of. She's yeah. going to be in The Northman, Eggers' new movie. Yeah. So I'm excited to see her in that. I'm so excited. <laughs> uh, I wish her character was not in this movie. That's the thing is, the casting is good. She turns in a really cool performance. I hate this plot line I fucking so hate goddamn it. much. Yeah. When she comes into the movie, it's like... Because it's just doing... The Laurie Strode Halloween 2018. I think it, that's thing. why I think it's making fun of it. It is because, okay, now we're in the spoiler section of the review. Uh, I could see that point because she just gets killed. She like she gets thrown in the garbage. She literally is tossed in the trash after getting chainsawed through the torso. Uh, granted, that doesn't kill her. She lives for so long after that. This movie's very inconsistent in what kills you, how quickly. That's maybe... <laughs> When I look at this overall is my biggest problem with it because when there's not a consistent level of like how fantastic is the violence going to be or mm. how, you know, like how, um I, I don't know how to, like video gamey are all these characters where they can survive like insane shit. It just makes me feel like what are the, st like how worried should I be? Oh, okay. Which in a slasher, I feel like you should always have a consistent level of worry or else then it's like, I don't know, you kind of lose all that tension. Yeah, my concern is I'm thinking about the future kill count for this and I'm like, oh shit, the scene where they get attacked isn't where I'm going to have the graphic come up because they're going to survive for another five minutes yeah. and not die until they're fucking hobbling down the street in the rain or whatever. Yeah. You know? So that's my and concern. Just, my, I think another thing with having Sally in this too is, and granted this movie doesn't like erase the existence of the original. It's another one of those things where there's like a gajillion different versions of the canon of this story now that it doesn't fucking matter. But the thing with Sally is the end of the original movie is so scary because she just, that's a broken person. Like she is laughing and crying at the same time and her surviving it's it's one of those things where it's like she lived but man is it gonna be worse than if she had just been killed by Leatherface you know it's a fucked up feeling coming out of that movie and I don't want to know what her I just want to have this vague feeling of like you know, what is the rest of her? That's like scary to well, me. Well, that's the tagline. Who will survive and what will be left Yes, and that's terrifying. Yeah, and that's great. So I don't need to see any of that. I do think this movie, you know, logically follows like the Sally we see here 
could come from the Sally we saw at the end of the original, like Hell Bent on Revenge. Uh, she's not a great moral character in this movie. She uses the the sisters as like bait and <laughs> yeah, locks them definitely. in there. Uh, but I, I agree that I'd rather have yeah. her left unknown as you far know, as her fate just goes. Like, Draw, like getting you know in that truck and she's riding off into the abyss of like a fucked up life and that's all i need to know and yeah. that's so much scarier to me yeah like literally the first line of this movie that's not from john larica is about sally it's like whatever happened to her and that's coming from elsie fisher who uh yeah, was, was in eighth, eighth grade. grade yeah yep and she's the main character in this movie lila and lila's backstory is that she is a school shooting survivor uh, from Stonebrook is the the school's name in the movie, obviously referencing Stoneman Douglas uh, from the 2018 school shooting. Uh, how do you feel about that? I feel like it. we don't do much with it. It's an interesting thing that gets brought up pretty early on and i like the little scene of her with the guy they meet at the gas that station might be my favorite fucking scene the two of, the of movie. them together her and richter yeah. i like it too yeah. but we don't really go anywhere with that besides she what gets over her trauma to use a gun like i just i'm not sure what the movie's saying and i don't even know if the movie knows what it's saying well i think it's i think it's a thing with like yeah trauma is definitely a theme i think it relates her to sally and because Sally has that scene as she's dying of like, don't run from it. It'll follow you. And I think that resonates with Lila because she is already uh, haunted by the trauma of this school shooting. I don't know. Like, I, we have never been in that situation, obviously. Uh, and we don't really know anyone personally who has been in that situation. But personally, I'm not bothered by its inclusion because I feel like that is a more salient thing for a character of this age uh it's like how we talked about earlier how this is a movie with gen z characters being like how they are and yeah. i feel like a school shooting is more salient for that, that i guess generation. it's just the like how the her, the end of her kind of arc or the, her like coming around moment to like wow she's a badass and kind of overcomes her fear and like it's her using, like a, using gun, a gun which i think is a weird like i don't know what it's what, you know, I just, I'm not sure what the, what the intent is there. Genuinely, yeah. I don't know. I can't, like, parse it. Sure. Because I find it confusing. Uh, her sister is Mel, played by Sarah Yarkin, who was in Happy Death Day to You. And That's right, yeah. this character is very divisive, to say the least. She's uh, meant to be, I think, a little bit annoying, at least at first. I mean... It's a slasher. I think people are forgetting, like... You're supposed to kind of want them all to die. Yeah. It's a, like, it's not a fun slasher if you, I don't know. <laughs> like, that's the whole point, right? If you're making, like, a typically, if you're making a popcorn slasher, you make them annoying teens. Well, this movie does ride the line, though, because it, it makes them annoying. But then I think, I think this movie kind of redeems Melody because, like, she, yeah, for she sure. shows serious uh regret and sympathy with what happens to leatherface's adopted mom uh she yeah she's like very sh shaken by it and i think that that shows her her kind of empathy but early on yeah she's annoying she's at the gas station this dude rolls up i love that like so this dude uh richter as we will come to know him rolls up in a very large pickup truck it should have truck nuts on it it should have truck nuts and then he's got a gun on him because it's texas yeah that happens and then she's like within earshot of him and she's like how small the penis do you have well to i have? think it's because of like she's defensive of her sister that's the thing and like it's an annoying character trait for her to say that especially right there i don't know how believable it is for a character to say that within earshot but then when you learn that her sister is a school shooting survivor that makes sense she even says i'm sorry i shouldn't have to like get mad on your behalf yeah and so that's the thing is like this movie has these themes and has these buzzwords, but I think it engages with them a little bit deeper than like, you know, I hate using it as a shorthand for uh, bad, so, but like Black Christmas, how how shallow it is. This one I think goes a little bit like a layer deeper because I mean, even with the uh, feral hog thing. Yes, I can't believe, okay, first of all, I can't believe that that has been referenced in a film. It made me very happy. When, I didn't know that this was yeah, like a I Twitter had to, thing. I had to pause the yeah. movie and explain it to James. Because basically they ask like, 
why do you even need that gun? And he's like, there's feral hogs around and they're an invasive species and blah, blah. And I'm just, I pause the movie and I'm like, is that a reference to the feral hogs thing on Twitter? And James had no idea what the fuck I was talking about. Basically, there was a tweet that went viral that was a response to a... It was like a, I'm looking it up right now. It was a person asking why you would need guns, right? Yes. Or like satirically saying like, yes. How many? What guns do I need? It was a response to a tweet talking about like gun control, basically. And this guy responds, legit question for rural Americans: How do I kill the thirty to fifty feral hogs that run into my yard within three to five minutes while my small kids play? And it's just it. I don't know, it gained a life of its own, but I love that that's definitely being referenced here. Yeah. So there's that. that the guy ends up, uh, what is it called? Coal running? Coal rolling. Coal rolling, yeah. Yeah, that is an actual thing that apparently yeah. some people do, which is super shitty. It's so if you do douchey, it, uh, yeah. They do it to, like, people on bikes or, like, people in uh, hybrids or electric vehicles, whatever. It's shitty. But, like, the fact that this movie has those very specific things... Uh, it feels, you know, a lot of this movie reminds me of the Wrong Turn reboot, which I don't think you saw, but it similarly engages with uh, these kind of like, I almost said Millennium, but they are more like Gen Z themes and the characters. But uh, similarly to that movie, it doesn't completely side with like those characters. Yeah. And I think that some people just hear these buzzwords and hear a character say late stage capitalism and are like, oh, this is woke Leatherface. Even though, like, they're not doing the extra step of thinking of, like, oh, but of maybe... actually, like, the context in which things are being said. And yeah. I do like, and it's it's weird. This is why I like the first chunk of this movie a lot. And I think the, the first of it, act I'm of like, this movie Ugh. is pretty good. It's because the first bit of it is when you get, like, and this, for me, I think is is reflective of real life too is you have these characters where there's things about them or maybe at their core you're like 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 Richter I'd be like he seems like a good guy but he also is doing he's coal rolling and it's like you know but it's that's what people are like you know people are complex people are weird and people's personal politics are not as cut and dry as we all like to think they are yeah because Richter is introduced as like an asshole and if this movie were a like woke Gen Z movie or whatever that guy would just be an asshole. But he is one of my favorite characters in the yeah, movie. I like he's him more a nuanced. Lot. When he realizes that he's talking to a school shooting survivor, he's like, he's not like, oh well, if only if you had only a gun. If only you had a gun. Something like he that. Even, he even unloads because she asked if it's loaded, and I think he can tell she's a little freaked. So he immediately grabs it and unloads it. Like it's gun and safety. Yeah. I, that's my favorite scene is these two talking to each other. Yeah. And, and then, like, later he's uh, he's mad at Dante, and he sees him, like, walking. It's after Dante is attacked. And, like, he's mad. He's like, hey, I'm talking to you. But then he has, like, a moment of, like, hey, man, are you all right? Like, it's it's a guy who, like, is, yeah. whose personal politics you might not agree with, but, like, in the moment, he's, like, a good guy. I don't know. Well, I think it's, like, it just – and I, this is, I believe, so strongly that, like, you know, it, it's a very American thing where – and this is see, like visually Texas Chainsaw, we all live very spread apart from each other. And even within cities, our cities aren't walkable. So we're all like super isolated and stuff. And I think that that contributes a lot to like how we talk about each other and what politics is like now. Because mm-hmm. I think when you start mingling and it's why cities typically tend to lean more to the left is when you are exposed to more people you form personal relationships and your views change and i think he's like such an example of the kind of person where maybe once he's talking to people it's like you know what i mean it's yeah and it goes that- it goes the other way with them too because like when he first shows up uh mel is like talking about like oh he must have a small dick and they're like kind of uh discarding him uh as like a I don't know, rural guy who they can't relate to, but then uh, Lila seems to like get along with him and, and have a nice conversation with him. So yeah, I yeah. like that. It's probably my favorite scene, like we said. Yeah, I like those two a lot. Mm-hmm. And I also like how she kind of talks. This is why I think the, the her being a school shooting survivor is weird because we start like really exploring it here and then it just kind of, I don't know, we don't, we revisit it like once. On the bus, but when, yeah. Yeah, but when mm-hmm. she's talking about how she's like i'm kind of always expected now to be something special and it's the idea of maybe being the either like the perfect victim or just we use survivors of things as like 
inspiration fodder, you know, as like a wow, how inspiring this school shooting survivor started a textile company. I don't know, you yeah. know, just just stuff like that where you expect them because they lived through such traumatic stuff they then have to go on to do amazing things because it was some transformative thing for them yeah and that's unfair pressure on them because like she's like no the people who died were the ones who were the the achievers yeah, i'm just a person the survivor's guilt kind yeah, of thing. yeah yeah it's like this is like the most interesting writing in this and then we kind of just leave it here mm -hmm. which is a bummer granted i don't know what the best way of going back to that would be without it feeling a bit forced. I don't know. Traveling with those sisters is Dante. Dante and Dante's partner. Da As the Netflix subtitles say, <laughs> Dante's partner. Apparently- This character doesn't have a fucking name. Apparently it's Ruth. That's okay. what internet tells me. Well, it's Dante's partner. Thank you very I much. I don't think her name is everyone said because we've watched it twice with subtitles. I've never seen the word Ruth in that damn <laughs> those damn text files, but I have seen Dante's partner more than once from Netflix. It's my favorite because she's not Dante's girlfriend. She's not his fiance. It just like Dante's partner like over and over again is so fucking funny. <laughs> and like it's a significant role. It yes, is not. she's doing a lot. She's doing a lot. She has a whole scene where it's basically just her and Leatherface. Yeah. Like, why doesn't she have a name, Netflix? It's so weird. Like, the one, the other girl uh, who oh, is yeah. it Catherine. Catherine, yeah. She gets a name, and she's in Last of the Movie, I think. <laughs> it's just very funny. I love Dante's partner. Dante's partner. Who looks like if you had to draw Samara Weaving from memory... They do look, they could be related for sure. Mm -hmm. She was an outlander and she's a mean little lady in that show. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that character. She's great in Outlander. I didn't even realize that was her in this. So yeah, yeah props to her. Uh, so yeah, the four of them, or at least the three of them, not really Lila. She's just there Lila's for reasons unknown. Out. I think it's because what she was like, if... I'm going to move back in with dad. And I wonder if maybe they have a bad relationship with her. It's Definitely. not super explained. It's not clear. And I don't, don't know even why know she's there. We need it. I think it's just like she doesn't have anyone else to like, you know, be with. But there's also the remark of like, and you can't take care of yourself. So like, and that, and then she like thinks that she had sex with Richter in his weird garage. Yeah. Like What's going on with that? I don't know, man. Yeah. The writing in this, when it gets down to like the plot stuff, this movie's bad. There's a whole there's a whole thing with the deed of the house <laughs> that makes no sense and yeah. we'll ask you for help understanding it, but I don't know. Yeah. Uh, the, okay, so apparently these like uh gentrifuckers as they're gentrifuckers, called. Gentrifuckers, yeah. They are moving into this <laughs> small town called Harlow, which is like one of those, it's like a one street town. I don't know, like House of Wax. Yes. Like that, you know, like, uh, I'm trying to think of what else to compare to. It's just, it's a very classic looking American town. It looks a like a studio theater. back lot. It does look like a back But lot. it's not, because this Bulgaria? was shot in Bulgaria. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Twice. Yeah, they, I don't know how much they shot the first go around, but the studio didn't like it. And then they just started the movie over. It replaced the director. Yeah. With a new director and reshot it. Yeah. What I wonder, fuck? I want to see that old footage so bad. I know because it, it sounds was. like it's like the same cast, yeah, uh -huh. and same script. So what the fuck? I don't know. I don't know, man. But uh, they're all heading to this town called Harlow to make the entire town into a TikTok house. I'm not exactly sure what they're doing here. Really don't know because because uh, uh, Dante and Mel are chefs. Yeah. Okay. So they're <laughs> chefs, but Dante's also an influencer because <laughs> we. See, like his, I think it's like his Instagram. And he's like, hey guys, it's finally happening. We're going to make a difference. And then there's a bunch of investors that show up and they're, it's just, I'm not sure. Like it does, like it sounds like a cult. They make a joke about it. But the fact that they're chefs and I'm what, assuming these other people have, each have kind of specialties. And they I think can they're run all a commune together. I think they're all entrepreneur influencers which are two terms that fucking kill me. Yeah. And they're, because, uh, what is it? Um, Brady Brunch? Is, Brady's Brunch Brady's, is going to be one of the, the stores or the brands that is. Yeah, that is moving in. They they win an auction for one of the empty buildings there. Uh, yeah. 
I don't know what's I think going it's on just, with it. I think it's literally just an influencer village. And Because Melody tells her sister, Lila, she's like, we can move here and start a new, uh, like, free from violence or something. I don't know, man. Whatever. They're moving here. They're starting their weird little Gen Z influencer uh, commune. I wish them the best of luck. But, oh, no, wait, there's a there's a Confederate flag hanging from one of the buildings. Oh, no. And the, the investors are showing stuff. I do think this seems funny because they see the Confederate flag and instead of like, oh, my gosh, that can't be here. That's 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 wrong. It's like the investors are coming. We got to rip this down. It just it's such a funny like first reaction to it. And I almost think that's a little bit of like. I think it's intentional. I think Dante is meant to be a shallow character who you don't really. I think he's he's an entrepreneur. Like he's an entrepreneur first. Yes. Before anything else. Yeah. Yeah. It's so weird, though, because like (laughs) they're clearly entrepreneurs. But when they arrive, he's like, look at the effects of late stage capitalism. So. (laughs) Take yeah. it away, hon. He also, yeah, like, sings into the echoey street. And oh! it made us laugh. We rewound it a couple times. And I'm just going to leave it to our editor, Josh, to just edit it in whenever he thinks it would be the funniest in this episode. So we'll see what he does with it. Yeah, go ahead, man. Just put it anywhere that you want to hear. It. Oh! Oh! <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think he, I think Maybe he's the kind of like still a capitalist, but he can do it ethically kind of guy is the sense that I get from him. Like he's still an entrepreneur, but he's like, no, we can fix uh, the way that, you know, I don't know. That's but they're so vague about what this is going to be. It doesn't matter. It makes it funnier almost (laughs) to just like, I'm sorry. That that, that these like influencers arrive on a party bus Mm -hmm. back in, I don't know. And it kind of also puts you in the position of the characters that live there because they're also like, what the fuck is Yeah, this that's another be? scene that I like is when they get stopped by the cops. But the sheriff is like, hey, a lot of us grew up here. We saw it like before it fell apart. Just try to respect it, right? And then even Mel is like, well, our, our grandma lived here. And they like recite a local phrase. And that I think ties it back to the original Texas Chainsaw because- they, Yeah, they have family ties as yeah. well. Yeah. So I, I think that that works too. That's like, I really like the first act of this movie. I do too. And yeah. then it goes one way <laughs> ticket to Stupidville. It's like- But even when it gets to Stupidville, I'm having a good time. It's when it gets to like- Sally Hardesty fucking legacy bullshit that I don't care about. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, <laughs> the fucking Venga bus. Yeah, so <laughs> they go inside and because they think that the, the bank has reclaimed this entire town. And so they're like, we can just do whatever. So they walk in and oops, there's a lady in here. And she uh, walks out and she's got her little rolly oxygen tank. And th- that building used to be an orphanage. And oh, we look at the class photo. Of Cl- yeah, the class orphanage. of 75, which would be two years after, or no, a year after, a year after. the original events. Yeah. Uh, and there's a big boy in the back whose face is scratched out. Uh, yeah. So so Leatherface just went to an orphanage after, which begs the question, like, what happened to Drayton and stuff in this Yeah, because Nubbin's got run over, but Drayton yeah. was still alive Drayton's as far as we alive. know. Um, I did see that Fede Alvarez, that's the other thing, is this movie had a weird production history, and at it's a story by credit by the guys who did the Evil Dead remake, mm-hmm. Fede Alvarez and Royo Sayegas. I might be mispronouncing those names. Apologies. Um, but I saw that Alvarez said in an interview just earlier this month that, like, maybe those other sequels are still canon. It's up to you to decide. So I don't know what we're supposed to buy or believe. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. Whatever. It's fine. It it's doesn't fine. matter. I just had the thought, how did he end up in an orphanage? Yeah. <laughs> like, he just keep running at the end of the first movie down the road with the chainsaw. Just spun his way right into the orphanage's yeah. front doors. Couldn't find his way back home. I don't know. But he is the only, uh, like... Mm-hmm person living there besides this woman and she's saying like oh he he needs special care because he's a big big sweet boy you gotta take care of him man if that role wasn't it didn't need to be an older woman i would have store i would have flown to bulgaria and demanded that that be me because 
that's just everything I want to be. I mean, that's what film. you have to look forward to in like 40 years. Exactly. Because yeah. we'll reboot this. We're going to just remake this yeah. eventually. Yeah, for sure. Um, so the the two, so it's, who is it? It's Dante and Melody are like, oh, uh, the bank was supposed to kick you. Like, you're not supposed to be here. <laughs> and awkward. <laughs> and thus begins the saga of the deed to this house which is confusing and bad and i don't think makes any sense i don't think it makes any sense because she says she has the deed they're like no pretty sure that you don't own the house it's you like missed payments on it or whatever and then she throws up oh and the cops arrive and she collapses and the cops have to take her uh in their ambulance yeah yeah so they uh take her to like it's Leatherface goes with her and is so does Dante's partner Dante's partner is in the front seat of this van and they're all going to the hospital and oh and the sheriff by the way uh just want to say is played by the guy who played Lieutenant Gorman in Aliens that is the uh inexperienced like uh, lieutenant who doesn't have the respect of his crew and he's also in Hellbound Hellraiser 2 Mm -hmm. as the uh Bright-eyed doctor who Kirsty kind of has a crush on, and then he gets murdered by Julia Cotton. But uh, he's yeah, uh, some some horror casting in there. Yeah, I didn't recognize him. He gets shot through the throat. <laughs> yep. Yeah, uh, everyone in this van gets fucked up because she the lady dies, and before she dies, she's like, who? <laughs> she's talking a lot of phrases, and she's like, now who raised you to be the good boy you are? And I'm just sitting there like, oh my god, he's so precious. <laughs> And she says, don't go in my room. <laughs> and then she dies. And you know that everyone in here is fucked. Yeah. Because uh, as soon as she kicks the bucket, he grabs the one cop's arm and breaks it in half and uses that guy's bone to stab him with. And it's pretty fucking cool. Pretty fucking cool, dude. <laughs> I like that might be my favorite gore in this movie because it's so I like I don't I don't think I've seen that before. I don't think I've seen that before, man. Breaking yeah. a wrist and then using the fucking bone shards to stab you in the throat. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So they they run into a I don't know it's like a thresher. I don't know they run Something. into like some fucking equipment in the middle of this field of sunflowers and uh, Dante's partner is still alive, but uh, <laughs> Leatherface drags his adoptive mom out of the van and is like cutting off her face and wears it yeah i think you compared leatherface to a cat with the first time we yeah watched this. He, you know because i think he loves her because but... he loves her but it's like if i were to die and it, lucy got hungry she'd probably just eat my face that's what we hear and also i think it's he cuts off her face as an act of vengeance like i'm gonna wear your face and everyone will have to look into your eyes while I kill them and get my revenge. And, and later he does makeup cool. on it. He does. I know. To make it pretty. I do like that. And part. that's a callback. I mean, Leatherface has always kind of done that. He's always been interested in that realm. Like makeup and mm-hmm. looking all fancy. Looking pretty. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it's like this, this movie does lean a little bit too far in the Michael Jason realm of, especially the la- like the last half of it. But yeah. a lot of this movie does still understand that he's like Leatherface isn't a shark like those other two are. He is a scared animal and he is more he's more like lashing out, I feel like. I think that's what we get early on. But then yeah. like in the, that last act, he's setting traps. With yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Shit. It's then it it really he changes a ton as the movie goes on and I yeah. don't like it. I do like that this movie utilizes the uh, the flashbulb sound effect that is so present in the franchise, and it uses it to the point of parody. Like, it uses it as a opens. scene transition with the grill <laughs> opening, and I think that that's hilarious, and it has to be knowing. Yeah. Like, it has to know what it's doing there. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, so it's a, it's a decent horror scene where she's, like, pretending to be dead for a minute, and then he eventually, like, catches on that she's still alive, and he, he, like, stabs her in the stomach and then slits her stomach open. She has a single tear roll down her, her cheek, uh, and then he, like, pops up out of the field in a fun shot. The, the yeah, him in the, the sunflowers is a nice shot. That's the thing is, like, this movie looks good. There's a lot of very nice shots in this. Like, there's... Um, 
Is it at the end where it's the kind of thunder? It's it's like um it's like uh, a rolling... second to third act break. It's when Sally finds the van. Yeah, and there's like a rolling storm coming in, and her just... headlights are lighting the cornfield, and yeah. above her is the rolling thunder. It's very cool. David Blue Garcia is the director who they went with, and I think that yeah, he he gets some really cool shots. Yeah, absolutely. I've, yeah, it, it, it's a good looking movie, and it's got that nice yellowy color that that first one often. Often has it just you know it's very kind of warm and it makes you feel fuzzy. the heat they're talking about the heat a couple yeah. of times in this movie and it's texas so obviously it's hot and yeah the color palette matches that i yeah. appreciate that hey want to talk to you about our sponsor this week keeps let's say you're an influencer and you're known for your luscious head of hair and you're about to move into an influencer commune that's in the middle of a tiny town in Texas. And because you're staking your entire life and career on being an influencer, you gotta keep that head of luscious hair. Keeps is a hair loss prevention medication service that offers a simple, stress-free way to keep your hair. They offer virtual doctor consultations and medications delivered right to your door every three months so you won't even have to leave your tiny influencer town. Discreet packaging in case you don't want anyone else to know what you're getting in the mail and proven results. They have more five-star reviews than any of their competitors. It can take four to six months to see results, so it's better to get started sooner than later. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash deadmeat to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's keeps.com slash deadmeat to get your first month free. K-E-E-P-S dot com slash dead meat. Our next sponsor this week is AMC Shudder. Our friends at Shudder have the most amazing collection of horror movies and more. They've got original movies like The Boy Behind the Door. We just did a commentary track on this one on our Patreon and we both really, really liked it. VHS 94, which we also just watched. If you like Texas Chainsaw Massacre because it's so American, that's kind of why I like it. You'll also really enjoy the last segment of VHS 94. They've got old stuff too, like the original Wicker Man, one of my absolute favorite horror movies. And if you're into folk horror like that one, you'll enjoy their exclusive documentary called Woodlands Dark and Days Bewitched. It's the ultimate history of the folk horror genre. So if you're a fan of supernatural thriller and all things horror, you're gonna love Shudder as much as I do. And right now you can stream your first 30 days of Shudder for free. Go to Shudder.com and use code DEADMEAT. That's S-H-U-D-D-E-R.com, code DEADMEAT to stream your first 30 days of Shudder for free. Shudder.com, code DEADMEAT. Our last sponsor this week is Fume. I know people who've tried to quit smoking and it sounds absolutely miserable. Even beyond the nicotine addiction, it's just kind of the habit of it. You always have something in your mouth or you're holding something in your hands. But Fume is a natural inhaler designed specifically to help with that hand-to-mouth habit of smoking. So it's a little tube or pipe kind of made out of 100% Canadian maple and you use cores infused with plant oils inside of it. No nicotine, it's 100% natural. Natural. They have flavors like peppermint that kind of simulate menthol cigarettes or sweeter flavors like lemonberry bliss. Not only does Fume help with the quitting process, they also have support beyond quitting with over a dozen cores for relaxation, energy, and more. I tried one out. It tastes really nice. So whether you're a smoker or ex-smoker who still struggles with cravings, Fume is the perfect tool for you. It's time to create positive habits and quit naturally with Fume, and we're here to make it easier. Right now, if you head to breathefume.com slash deadmeat and use promo code deadmeat, you are going to save 10% off your entire order. You're going to save on cigarettes you aren't buying and save on your initial purchase of Fume. That's 10% off your entire order when you head to breathefume.com slash deadmeat and use code dead meat but yeah Leatherface he kills her and then he heads back to his his orphanage town where the uh, influencers are hanging out they're auctioning off the buildings they're partying and then when it rains uh, they take the party inside the bus yeah and Richter comes and he he takes the keys to the bus he like, this, uh, steals yeah. them okay this- <laughs> God, this is why I said the deed plot is just, I, I hate it. It makes no sense. It's so fucking like, dumb. So, okay, he takes the keys to the bus and 
Because he's like, uh, heard that old lady died. Uh, she thought that she owned her house. You said that it's your house. Well, I'm taking I'm the taking keys. Your bus. I'm taking the keys to your bus until you show me that deed. Yeah. What? And they can't find. They they don't have the deed. So here, to the house. here here's the thing with yeah. the deed. Okay. Because uh, yeah, if they don't have the deed, uh, then the old lady was right. She really owned that house, and then their intrusion was completely unwarranted, and uh, they will feel even more guilty about her death because they caused it. So um, Dante can't find the deed. He says it must be back at the office in Austin, which, of course, they're from Austin. And they're like, wait a minute. Hold on. I wrote down the line. If, if, if it's true that we own the deed, then it can't be in the house. So they decide to search through the old lady's house, the orphanage, to find the deed to prove that she's right. And then I guess the hope is that they won't find the deed. And in their mind, that'll prove that Dante's right. Even though you can't prove a negative, just because you don't find the deed during your search doesn't mean that it's not there. Yeah, right? I just, yeah, this whole thing's confusing, and I don't know. Are yeah. we missing something? I Please tell us if we are, because we couldn't figure out what was going on. This We've watched part. this twice. <laughs> and just, I don't know, it just, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> yeah. It's real fucking dumb, but they go into the house and look for the deed. Yeah. Uh, they don't find it. They don't. Do they? I don't fucking remember. I don't remember. I hate the deed fucking thing. Because they're like, it, it's just, if it's true, then it won't be in the house. But you can't prove a negative. I just hate it. Yeah. They'd have to go through the entire house to definitively say it's not here. And even then. And even that. Yeah, it's it's very silly. Then what do you show Richter? What do you, what do you show him to get the keys back? Yeah. We Whatever. Look, Leatherface shows up to. It fucks up Dante. Put us out of it. Yeah, wait, yeah, that's true. Like, what would they... They could always just say, well, oh, you wouldn't find it. Okay. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, it doesn't Le- make Leatherface sense. Leatherface shows up and just puts us all out of our misery here. <laughs> he uh, fucks up Dante. There's a cool shot where you see glimpses of it through a swinging door. I feel like that's kind of like, like an Kurt. echo of the, the sliding door. Yeah. You know, swinging instead of sliding. Yeah. Um, it did remind me of that, especially because yeah. he's, he's kind of like twitching and stuff Mm -hmm. and that's in that first movie that scene is so scary because the sound of him twitching and you hear the the heels of his shoes hitting the floor is just creepy fucking sound design it yeah it definitely feels like an homage uh so melody's upstairs this is like a whole she's hiding under the bed melody goes through so much shit in this movie She, she is under that bed for so long yeah and then she's getting chased under the floorboards with a chainsaw melody is put in danger earlier on than i thought and because dante gets attacked and seemingly killed i i worried uh that melody would be killed right away yeah uh, i guess i don't know worried but like i was i believed that she could be killed right yeah. away so good job movie yes yeah, so she's hiding under a bed in uh the, the woman's bedroom because leatherface also comes upstairs that's when he grabs one of her dresses out of the closet and is like holding it and is really sad and he's kind of smelling it and it's like it's like oh he's <laughs> he's such a sad boy i just that like like he's just a very sympathetic horror killer and that's why we all love him i'm glad this movie doesn't lose sight of that aspect of him Mm -hmm. that is what makes him very different than other horror villains um but it's also why i think it's weird how smart he gets later in this movie because he's setting traps and stuff and i'm like i just don't know if that's really his thing yeah he can like do stuff you know he he i think he just like very much lives in the moment and is not planning ahead and creating traps and things. scared animal should yeah be, he's a scared animal should yeah be the leather face motto yeah uh but then yeah he puts makeup on the, the mat like the skin mask he has on because he's got to make mama's face look pretty <laughs> and then he hears the the party going on outside and heads out there um this whole sequence just feels like a lot's going on, so I don't know if I have my order of things. Well, okay, we get the kind right. of shining esque shots of him slamming. And kind open. of very shiny esque. It's a straight up. We can stop doing this reference. I've seen it so many times. I feel like just this year. We the, just saw it in the boy behind the, the door. The boy behind the door did, did the exact same. 
the shot where it follows the axe back yeah. and forth. And it's a cool shot. I don't need to see it anymore. We're good, yeah. We're this good. time it's with a sledgehammer because he's breaking open the wall. We've realized that uh, when she was like, don't go into my don't room. Don't go in my room. It's because she kept his Why would she chainsaw keep it? behind the wall. It's the same model, same color. And apparently... It still runs, even though I have read online that if you store a chainsaw with fuel in it for 40 plus years, the fuel would corrode the engine or whatever. I don't know. Whatever. 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 It's, it's fine. He gets his chainsaw. <laughs> Dante is, isn't is dead yet, it's revealed, and he yeah. stumbles out, and Richter finds him, and his face is all torn open. Richter's like, get in the bus. I'm going to take care of this, I guess. He's got the gun. Uh, now guns are... The a useful tool, which sure. I mean, they are until he gets so murdered. Dude, he he goes into the orphanage to fight Leatherface. He gets his leg broken. Dude, his leg <laughs> turns into a a right angle. It's yeah. like you could draw that little like curve in it, like in math class. And we know when you're looking at a triangle and you draw the little curve in the corner, it's like you could do uh, like <laughs> you mean like for angles. Is yeah, like you could do like the. Pythagorean theorem on his leg is so nuts. It's nasty yeah. and awesome. Uh, and he puts up a great fight, and I was sad that he gets killed, but, yeah. like, you need to. I do like this is a, a shot, and I, I think it's just an, a cool, creative thing where uh, Melody's under the bed, and she, she like, kind of uses her toe to push this, like, f this uh, floor mirror. She kind of turns it so that Richter can see that Leatherface is in a, in a corner. It's, a cool, yeah. it's neat, all nice right? Nice little moment there. Last top 10 moments before disaster, though, <laughs> Jesus. His head gets turned into hamburger meat. Yeah, because Leatherface. Uh, Leatherface slams his throat against like a glass shard, and then once he's down on the ground, to Richter's credit, the last thing he does while living is like get his keys out so that Melody can... He, he, okay, I'm sorry. Like, when Dante stumbles out of this house, his jaw is, like, hanging off his face. Yeah. Give them the keys. Give let's them all, the keys now. Let's all get the fuck out of here. Good time here to, to give them the keys. I'm coming with you guys. Let's all get in the bus and fucking leave. But instead of giving them the keys, he's got to go take care of this himself. Which also makes me think this is maybe poking a little bit of fun at the idea of, like, the good guy with a gun thing. Maybe. So, yeah. because maybe he was thinking, like, I, why bother giving them the bus keys? Because I'm going to save the day. So I think fine. he just forgot that he had the keys until... Well, that he, was irresponsible. It was. It was, and he shouldn't have taken them in the first place, but the writing of this movie is bad. <laughs> yep, and then Melody's just under the bed watching him get uh, smashed. His face. And that's the other thing, is this is another reminder of me uh, to the wrong turn reboot. A guy's head in that, in that movie gets mm. fucking pulverized just like that with a hammer over and over. I always like to see it. It's always, it, it gets me every single time. It's fucked up. Because, like, you know there's just, like, no coming back from it. That's just not a person anymore. Maybe in this movie, though, because people <laughs> Cause survive Sally. some weird shit. Especially as, the late, the longer you survive in this movie, the greater your chances of surviving just <laughs> the most wacky stunt done on your body. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So now, um, are we all going to the Venga bus? Uh, not quite yet because Mel gets knocked through the floorboards, like the, the oh, world's yeah. weakest floorboards. Uh, she's knocked like down the stairs through the floorboards. It's probably all like rotted wood. Sure. I believe it. Leatherface goes to get his chainsaw and there's like a nice little horror sequence of her, him like cutting the chainsaw through the floors, trying to, to get her. She's crawling away. He cuts through a poop pipe. Gets poop all over. Oh, so much poop all yep. over her. Simple little chase sequence. And Effective horror. Yeah, Fine. so that's when. Okay, she hears Lila outside, and Lila and Melody they go back to the the big bus, and to get on the van. I bus, just yep. can't. I just think it's because they're all having this influencer party in here with like gamer lights. I don't know, and I'm just imagining Melody gets on there. And they're all just like, "Wow, who smells like poop?" Yeah, just, who poop? Fucking poop just, themselves. I'm just. <laughs> I wrote a fake tweet. Damn, who smells like poop in here? Aha, uh -huh, hashtag. I know it smells crazy in there. <laughs> so then comes the bus scene, which is very good. And I want to see someone dub the Venga bus music over it. Like, yeah, this is uh, this is the scene. Yeah. This, is the, this is the scene. I mean, it ends the trailer with that stupid fucking 
if you try anything and you're canceled, bro. I almost just want to ignore that line because it doesn't I make think sense. It's fine. It's stupid. It shouldn't be there. It's dumb. No one would say that. I think someone would say that though. <laughs> People don't. Re I guess. You don't get canceled for murder. But people use canceled for everything. But the people who use canceled for everything are generally the people mocking cancel culture. It's not the... I don't, I don't know. You know <laughs> what? True, yeah. The whole world's so fucking crazy at this point. Maybe just, this is real. <laughs> I just love you don't get canceled for murder, which is true. It's not like, oh, you're canceled. It's like, oh, no, you are going to jail. And, you know, it's like that's... There's a line for sure. Yeah. But I like the idea of someone like, oh my gosh, he literally murdered a guy canceled. Yeah. It's very funny. Like, is fucking Phil Spector canceled? <laughs> I don't know. Phil Spector is canceled, yes. Yes, he is. <laughs> Whatever. That was such a, a cool, timely reference that everyone will know listening to this. <laughs> Grussell will know. Uh, he's he, not, he's, he's not still alive, is he? Didn't he, like, just die? Did he? Hold on. I think he did. Yeah, he died 2021. Great. Fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> we canceled it for a reason. Uh, okay. Leatherface fucking cuts through all these people. It's a fun, entertaining scene, but also horrifying. It is scary, especially the, uh, it, as funny as it is, the live stream it, there's something very creepy about everyone being like, wow, well, all this looks so fake, but it's, it's like real. It's like in Yeah, yeah. Where it's like people are like not taking it seriously and you're like, no, but there's an, no, you're seeing what's happening. My favorite is the one comment on the live stream that's like, damn, where is this? I want to go. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's me. Uh, yeah, because like Leatherface is tossing limbs out of his He's way. He's not even tossing. He's like calmly moving legs and stuff. It's so funny. He just has such like a method to, uh, yeah, his madness, I guess. It's, it's definitely it's less like very of a, mechanical. It's less of like a good time slaughter scene than I thought it would be because like, I mean, they tie it back to the school shooting trauma yeah. of like the guy who gets cut down his like side and he's like staring at uh, they're Lila. They're laying on the ground. And I think it, I think it actually kind of successfully rides the line between being entertaining and scary. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you're kind of like, yeah, it's the the slaughter scene, but also this is kind of fucked up. Yeah. And Especially how... when Catherine tries to escape out the window and you almost think she's going to do it and then he just cuts her in half. Oh, he cuts her in half. Yeah. And her intestines are just pouring out. It's gross. Mm -hmm. And the, everyone trying to, like, the bus I'm get doesn't have emergency exits. It does look like an old ass bus. I don't to know. Be with fair. those like party buses, do they have those back exits? They should, but I think the this bus is like an old bus that's been tricked out because the outside of it looks kind of weird. Old. It's like a, it's like the front half of it is a single decker and then the back half is a double decker. Yeah, I don't know. But it's weird. There should be like, anyway, I just like, you know, there's the shot of like all their hands on the window and they mm -hmm. can't get out. And it's, I mean, the entire inside is just coated with all their blood and it's, it's cool. Like, it's a, I, I like this scene. I think it's the, the last good scene it's of the movie. Agreed. After this, I After think. After this, it just. Especially watching this a second time, we were like, all right, good night. <laughs> just. Yeah. We can just kind of cruise through the rest of Because the this sisters too. escape through the bathroom, like, ceiling window. They get out of the bus. Uh, and oh, yeah, because she stabs there. his arm, I think, with the corkscrew that she gets at the gas station, which, where can I get that corkscrew? All the merch at the gas station is like. I want all that merch because <laughs> it's such a, I, I, again, I like the beginning of this movie because you see the news report about like this fucked up shit happened here. And that's a John Lyric <laughs> quote. And <laughs> direct. there's all the, the merch where it's like, I, and then there's like a chainsaw, Texas. And I want all that stuff. It's mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. They, they escape out of the back of the bus and that's when Sally shows up. Yeah. Uh, so Sally's here and she wants revenge. She's like got her Polaroid of like them on the, the, the in the van, van yeah. of all her uh, friends. And she's like, uh, the sisters get in her car and she locks them in there as bait. She's like, oh, he's after you. So I can't let you go until I kill him. Yeah. And she says, it's him, isn't it? 
Leatherface. Yeah. This, <laughs> and I ugh. hate it. She, like, finds him in the orphanage, and she's like, you don't remember. She's like, Kirk, Pamela. Uh, Jerry. Fra- Jerry, Franklin. Uh, and then, she, you don't remember me? Say my name. I'm like, <laughs> Sally, I don't think he talks, really. Do yeah. You? It's like... Leatherface isn't that kind of villain. And I guess, like, sh- would she know that? I don't know. No. But it just is so... But what's really dumb is work. you see the seams of the screenplay when she confronts him. And then she's like, you don't remember me? And then he just, like, walks Turns past her. Turns around and leaves. He's got, she's got a gun trained on him. And he just leaves so that he can go attack the sisters outside. And that attack is thwarted by Sally shooting him and being like, I'm here to stop you. She just, so, like, what happens there? Because she decides she, she doesn't shoot him. And then all of a sudden, she's running outside. And she's, like, screaming, laughing. And kind of yeah. a nod to her laugh at the end of the oh, original, sure. I think. Mm-hmm. But it's, like, so what happened in that moment, in that cut? It's dumb. It, it's weird. And I think it's just, like, a maybe they wrote themselves into a corner kind of thing. Yeah. It just is weird. I don't, I don't understand why he doesn't attack her and she doesn't attack him. They just kind of. It's, it's, the scene just kind of ends. It's just so they can move the plot along, which fucking sucks. Yeah. Uh, it's bad. And then she, like, shoots at him, but then he cuts through her torso with a chainsaw. He cuts through her entire torso. Like, lifts literally. lifts her up and tosses her in the trash. <laughs> he throws her in the garbage. And, like... There's, like, when he's holding her up and chainsawing her, there's just all kinds of meat just being flung it's around the in camera. the air. And it's, she's alive for, like, ten more yeah, minutes. Yeah, ten, like, <laughs> minutes later, it's revealed That's that she's I'm there. Saying. And it's, is able to shoot him long range with what I think is a shotgun. I don't know guns. I don't know guns. It's a... But I think she's laying there from pretty substantially far away shooting at him with a shotgun. What? And she's having a whole ass conversation with, uh... Lila, Lila, yeah. Come on. It, like, that's what I'm saying. The longer you survive in this movie, the greater your chances are of just living through the most wild stuff being inflicted upon your body. Because the two girls, like, they end up, they they try and run over him with the car, and then they end up... Throws the chainsaw at the windshield, so they crash. Yeah, and they crash into, like, a, I don't know, a building. It looks like an... I think it might be the, the like, auto shop from earlier, whatever. Okay, yeah. But there's, like, definitely a piece of, I think, like, rebar going through uh, Mel's Melody's leg, leg yeah. which, like, that especially, like, that kills you, I feel like, pretty quick if it hits that artery. Depends, yeah. But it looked pretty bad i mean pretty bad if you're watching a movie and you something goes through your your thigh that usually is a signal for like oh it went through that artery and it's bad Mm -hmm. uh but she was able to apparently yank it out of her leg and then is able to like jump on leatherface later and use the it just what's the standard here for because if the whole movie's wackadoo like this then that's one thing but it's yeah. not. Yeah. The the rest of this is just like we're just. It's just fighting and then almost getting them and then saving them at the last minute. It's boring. Literally slasher. one scene is. Wait, what'd you say? It's just boring slasher third act. I know. I know. Yeah. And and literally one scene is um Leatherface coming at Melody, and then uh Lila stepping in front of Melody with the shotgun. She shoots him twice and then she's out of ammo. And then Melody steps in front of Lila with the chainsaw. It's like the same fucking shot of like stepping in front to save the sister within a minute time span. And she like cuts him up. Uh, This is after Lila attacks Leatherface saying, hey, Leatherfuck. Leatherfuck, yeah. And this is also after he um, sets up a whole ass trap where yeah. he uses a mannequin he finds in the movie theater. Oh, is it a mannequin? It's like a, because the movie that was screening was Werewolves of the Alamo or something and it's like this, maybe even like cardboard cutout. And oh, I, I like only noticed standee? it the second time, yeah. Oh, I only noticed that he leaves the chainsaw idling there. No, because there's like a person shape and it says like <sighs> Werewolves of the Alamo on the bottom and it's behind the chainsaw. So he puts the chainsaw in front of it and like it's running and so she thinks that he's there but he's not. He. Th- that's not Leatherface. That's not Leatherface. Yeah. It just. Mm, oh, no. Man. 
No, no, no. Yeah, uh, so eventually Melody uses his own chainsaw to swipe him up, and then he falls back into some water. Into a hole in the ground. It's a water-filled hole, yeah. sure. And, and uh, it's the big, there's all <laughs> this one giant bubble that, He's like, bloop, bloop. <laughs> as he sinks to the bottom. And then, okay, now it's daytime and we're safe, right? She takes Sally's hat and just puts it on. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> Thank you, Sally. Sure. And they get into their Tesla, I not think, Tesla. I don't know if it's a Tesla, but it might it's, as well be. It's yeah. got the autopilot. And, and they so, do the autopilot and they're like, eh, hey, you know what? I guess I will move here with you. Ha <laughs> fuck you. And then on their face. Pulls Melody out of the fucking passenger seat and decapitates her with a chainsaw. He, dude, just chops her head off with that chainsaw and Lila's stuck in the autopiloted car and is in the sunroof. Like, and I do like it. It's I love this last I think shot. this ending is very good. It's such a funny take on the last, the ending of the original. Yeah, for sure. And anyone who thinks that this movie takes itself too seriously must have missed this because yeah. there's no way anyone films this without knowing it's dark humor yeah. of an autopilot electric vehicle driving away. Especially right after she's like, I guess I will move here. Yeah. You know, that's this cheesy like, well, now we're good and ha ha ha. And we're, we're best friends and sisters now. And Hooray. I, like the first time we watched this, I was like, is this a dream? Like I just yeah. totally didn't expect it. I love this, the suddenness and abruptness of this kill. Uh, and the decapitation, like, fuck. And, like... Uh, the decapitation looks really good, too. It's solid. And like, it, I don't know what... It's upsetting. What movie magic is happening there, but it's such, like, a seamless transition into the effect and the head. I really want to know how they did it, actually. I love the kill. I do have to voice that, like, just... I've seen people online being like, I was so fucking happy that character died. And I'm like, by that point, I feel like she's redeemed herself. By that herself. point, she's... Er, yeah, she's like... not, like, a heinous person. No, she's just... A young and she's like how I feel like so many people myself included are in college where mm -hmm. all of a sudden you learn like oh my god there are things to be mad about kind of thing and yeah. it's it's that's normal that's part of getting older and yeah you know like I love the kill though but it just yeah. you know but some, just okay calm down the vitriol is <laughs> yeah. like all right just fucking chill it whatever yeah. it's it's how we described it I you know, it, it's one of those movies where it, I think it's an example of, like, why we don't give numerical ratings to movies. Because how would you even rate this? It's got so much bad to it. Yeah. And yet so much that was fine. Like, I was fine watching it. Yeah, like, it's it's entertaining. But it, it's weird. Like, the entertaining parts are really entertaining. But then the slow parts are real slow yeah and it's just it's uneven it's i mean and that's what the fucking texas chainsaw franchise is yeah it is probably the most uneven of the the big names maybe probably it's like, the most disjointed feeling i think yeah because even halloween which i think has the the most stinkers in it uh it's not texas chainsaw yeah I don't know. There's not as much of a difference in tone, maybe? Well, mm, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, no, I think that's right. Texas Chainsaw has the, the most varied tone, probably, because even just from one to two is a major difference. Mm -hmm. And then you got, like, <laughs> the weirdness of three. And, and then, then there's, like, Illuminati stuff. And, and, and four that's in with the fourth Matthew one, McConaughey, right? yeah. It's like... And then it's back to, like, really gritty torture porn in the, the next two. I... It's yeah, a weird franchise. I don't love. I can't. It's nah, not my favorite. I don't even know where I would rank this, and and I don't even think I you've can't. seen all of them. I no, I think I have. It's just they all feel they're such a blur to mm -hmm. me because I think we were watching all of them in a row, and I just was so tuned out during some of those that I don't remember a lot of them. Yeah. At this point. Like, no franchise is sacred. You, no. you know, it just, it's... I would say Chucky's the closest. Yeah, Chucky, for sure. Yeah. I, I think Chucky has an integrity to it still. Yeah. And that's it. Probably. Has, like, a through line and a, a consistency because it's, like, the same voices making them. Yeah. But, uh, whatever, you know, I whatever. Everything uh, else, you know, try something, whatever. 
You want to make a new nightmare? I don't know. Fucking try it, I guess. Yeah. Poor nightmare's been left out of the game for a while. Yeah, it's not going to uh, take anything away from the first movie. Yeah, whatever. So that's that's that. That's Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. No the. No the. No the. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are really trying to get this awards thing uh, off the ground. Oh, yeah. So the Dead Meat Awards, the uh, the Prime Rib is the name of the award. We're, we're trying to make it happen. So if that happens, you'll see it in March. Yeah, it'll be like our pilot episode of an award ceremony that we'll see. We'll just see how it goes. We'll just see how it goes. We're, yeah. we're trying something here. Uh, we're working on that. We've obviously got Zorin's Kill Counts coming out, which are great. Uh, I think you might be in the next fake ad. Yes. Maybe, because uh-huh. those are fun to do. I just did the last one. I'm going to start working on my own my own kill count, perhaps. Ooh, ooh going to say that. You're going to verbally commit to it. I mean, I've already said a few times, if I ever do one, the it'll people be this. Want it. I know. It's just, uh, it's intimidating. <laughs> I understand. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, It's an established format and thing. I guess it helps Zorin just went in there, guns blazing. It helps that Zorin thing. did it. Sure. And then, uh, like, I see comments nonstop asking for a Chelsea co count. So the people want it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So fingers It'll crossed. It'll happen. I happen. definitely, like, this year I foresee it happening. Because now I have more time to do things like that. So. Yeah. Because the podcast will continue its every other week release. Hope that's okay with you. I uh, hope these episodes are, are fun. I'm feeling nice and rejuvenated. Yeah. We're going to have new sets soon yeah i think i don't know how many more episodes will be on this set but maybe two maybe three yeah i'm so excited to have a new set yeah yeah uh lots of lots of fun changes happening now mm-hmm. that we have the time to to do them which is really exciting yeah uh but some things are the same like at dead meat james on twitter and instagram for yeah social and i'm at carebeck c-r-e-v-e-c-c on twitter and instagram and if you want merch deadmeatstore.com oh and tiktok Demi James on TikTok too. Mm-hmm. Some fun stuff posted on there. Thanks, yeah. Bork. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. That's it for this week. So uh, until next time, I'm James and I'm Chelsea, and this has been the Dead Meat Podcast. Oh. oh!